Good morning, folks. I'll have the airport with the side of Volcano. Rome is one of the busiest airports in Europe, but this opened up in the ground just a few feet from a runway. The experts have two baffling things to say. First, that it's volcanic, and two, it's nothing to worry about. Okay? It appears Greenland has recently set an all-time local temperature record at the end of July, beating the previous record by 2 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this belies the generally colder temperatures there this year. I'll tip my hat again to swings between climate extremes. Typhoon Kong Rei, churning northward, east coast of Taiwan needs to be on alert now. How long can the high pressure keep precipitation around the southern Australian coastlines and across to New Zealand? At least another 36 more hours. Arctic low temperature contrast kicking off a foggy London day. The main storms are in the low to the south where moisture will play a role over a large portion of the continent today. Top watch here today is a low feeding off that power high pressure driving energy north. Meanwhile, the Pacific moisture is rushing over the southwest drought zones up the convergence lines to meet that other air mass, and once it's moved slightly east tonight, the storms are heading my way in Ohio. Top weather story, though, is what we've mentioned for weeks. Tornadoes this year are in stark contrast to 2012 and 2011. In fact, the record low ever recorded is shared at 50% the annualized average, and we are in risk of breaking those. Solar wind speed under 400 km per second and density hovering within normal range along with plasma temperature. KP index is low. Solar flares still low but might be building as we have some enormous umbras turning in to face Earth. On the south, we need the little backside spots to grow but up north it looks like a double umbra back there. Half positive, half negative would make this one of the biggest delta spots I've ever seen. So far it hasn't released much since it was behind the limb out of sight. Last night, we introduced a game changer. NASA's ISWA now has a new signet, primary magnetic connections for the inner planets all on one Earth-facing frame. Like I mentioned last night, you can toggle the legend, turn on and off grid lines, and even the planetary connections themselves. You can put any SDO wavelength up there as a background. For these purposes, I'll stick with AIA 1700. Just like before, the grainy circles are backside connections, while opaque circles indicate Earth-facing connections. Of course, proximity warnings are still issued if sunspots get too close to the connection. Helps to verify that indeed Earth's connection is over there on the departing limb. I'd also like to point out the decreasing redness in the Earth-facing corona hole, meaning the power of it is weakening. Last night, I combined the planetary positions, coronal hole, and uptick drought to hold at 8 with a pipe dream of 9 this morning, but that's not going to happen with the power of the hole decreasing. We still expect this uptick, but the factors will begin to require lower scores in the days ahead. We'll hold at 7 to 8 for now. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.